In the description box below, we've included great resources to assist you, including links to our how-to hub. Be sure to check it out often as we are always updating the content. We are covering the installation of Virtual Smart Zone version 5.1 within Google Cloud. I'll cover system requirements as we work through the installation. In order to perform the installation within the Google Cloud environment, we need to do three things. We'll create a storage bucket and upload our installation media to that bucket. Then, we will create an image from our installation media, which will include the correct hardware requirements for our VSZ install. And last, we will create a VM instance. Once all of that is complete, we can work on completing the actual VSZ installation, which behaves similar to any other type of virtual smart zone installation. Obviously, you'll need the login to your Google Cloud platform, but you'll also need the Google Cloud VSZ installation package downloaded locally to your computer. Then, you need a browser and terminal emulator such as PuTTY. Lastly, we'll need a program to handle compressed files such as 7-Zip. I perform this on my Windows PC as to utilize 7-Zip because we'll need to decompress a .bin file. I'll show you this process in detail because we don't normally unzip .bin files. Within our cloud platform, navigate to the navigation menu and select storage and then browser. We are going to create a storage bucket by clicking create bucket. I'll name it VSZ how to and click continue. Next, we choose a location. I'm choosing multi-region as the type and US as a location. You can choose the appropriate location for your instance here. Now we have storage class. I'm going to choose standard. There are other types, but I'd recommend using standard for this type of installation. Then click continue. For access control, we select fine grained and click continue. Under encryption, if you're utilizing customer managed keys, you can select that option here. We are using Google Managed Keys and we'll leave that checked. You can also select a retention policy or add labels here, but for our installation, that's not necessary, so we'll click on Create. Once the bucket is created, now we need to add our installation files. Google Cloud accepts a tar.gz file format for the VSZ installation files, so let's create one. Within my downloads folder, we have our vsz.bin file that we've downloaded from the Ruckus support portal. We need to extract this file, and in fact, we'll need to extract it twice before we can move it to the cloud platform. Since I've already installed 7-zip, I'm going to right click and then select 7-zip, then extract here to extract the file in this location. Once the extraction is complete, we now have a .raw file. I'll right click on the .raw file, highlight 7-zip, and select Extract here again. This produces our tar.gz file, which we can now upload to Google Cloud. To do so, I'll simply click and drag the file into our Google Cloud window, and the upload begins. This can take some time depending on your network connection and bandwidth. Our upload has completed, which took around 10 minutes. Now that it's complete, we will go to our navigation menu, select Compute Engine and Images, then select Create Image. We'll name our new image VSZ How To and select Cloud Storage File as a source. Then we click on Browse to locate our file. In the file browser under VSZ How To, we see our newly uploaded tar.gz file. Let's select that. All of the settings that are already selected are perfectly fine, so let's click on Create. This process took roughly 10 minutes to complete for me. Now that our image is complete, let's navigate to VM Instances. Now click on Create Instance. Once again, I'm going to name it VSZ How To and select our region. This is just our region for the demonstration, so be sure to select the correct region for your instance. This piece is important. Drop down the machine type field and select NI1 Standard 4. We need four CPUs and 15 gigabytes of RAM for our virtual smart zone instance, so this is the correct type. Remember, this matches our VSZ installation requirements perfectly. 
Next, select Change for Boot Disk and select Custom Images. Here, we will select the image we created earlier titled VSZ How To. Now I'll change our disk size to 100 gigabytes and choose Select. Now we want to check Allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic under Firewall. You might not choose Allowing HTTP, but for this example, we will. Now we click the Management link and select Networking. Select the Edit Pencil within the Network Interface scroll down and enable Port Forwarding. Remember, Google Cloud utilizes public IP space, so we will need to port forward the internal private IP space we set up later. Now click on Done and then click on Create. Once the instance is created, we see our external IP address. It's blurred here for privacy purposes, but I'll copy it to the clipboard and SSH to that address with PuTTY. We're in the CLI of our VSZ installation and logged in with our admin credentials and I've enabled. We need to run setup to start our process. For this example, I'll select two for high scale and hit enter. Then we're gonna confirm our selection by entering Y for yes and hitting enter. You can choose essentials here if that's what your installation requirements are. But again, this is a demonstration, so we're just choosing high scale. Now we select option one for IPv4 only. And here we will select option two for DHCP to automatically assign our controller an IP address. We can review the settings that were automatically configured, and if we are happy with the configuration, we'll type Y to apply them. This will take a few minutes, but once it's complete, we are again shown the IPv4 settings and asked to accept what was applied. Let's hit Y again, then press Enter. Great, our settings are applied. So now we can complete the setup within the web UI for Virtual Smart Zone. Back in our cloud platform UI, we have a link to the public IP address of our VSZ appliance. Again, I've blurred the IP, but if we click on it, we're redirected to the IP address's URL in our web browser. The issue with this is it does not include HTTPS or the port number. So I'm gonna add both HTTPS and the colon 8443 to the URL, then load the page. Now it directs us to our setup wizard where we can finish the setup. Depending on your bandwidth, you might see Virtual Smart Zone go through some different screens as we're seeing here. Try to be patient and wait until you get the cluster information screen to avoid any type of installation errors or hangups. We'll leave the cluster settings as new cluster then name our cluster VSZ How To and provide a description. Since our controller is behind a NAT, we are going to select the NAT option and input our public IP address, then click Next. Now we create our admin and enable passwords. We want to update these from the defaults to help secure our installation. Once we click Next, we get our confirmation page. Everything here looks great, so we will click on Finish. SmartZone is now performing system checks, and then we'll begin to finalize our installation automatically. While it's doing that, I want to hop back into Google Cloud and review our firewall rules. We still see our VM instance of VSZ How To, so I'm going to click on the name of the instance. Under Network Interfaces, we have a network named Default. Let's click on that. Next, we'll click on Firewall Rules. Here we want to ensure a few things are allowed. If you're accepting HTTP connections on Virtual Smart Zone, you'll want to allow TCP port 80. We also want to ensure we allow HTTPS and also the VSZ web port of TCP 8443. This all looks great, so now we just need to wait for the installation to finish. It takes some time to complete, so we'll check back on it over the next 30 minutes or so, which is pretty close to what this installation took. Great, our installation is now complete. So we can click on the URL to reconnect to our Virtual Smart Zone web UI and log in. Something to note, once the installation does show that it's complete, it still takes a few minutes to enable and start all of the services. Typically, I like to wait around 10 to 15 minutes before logging in and ensuring the system is fully up and online. Once we log in, we can see that our cluster health status is green. 
That means our virtual smart zone instance is fully up and ready to be configured to our needs. Before you go, be sure to check the description box below and access any of the great resources we've provided. Thanks for watching.